Welcome. So what I have here is log base 10 of c squared minus 1 minus 2 equals log base 10 of c plus 1. And this problem looks very, very, very similar to one where the inequality of logarithms, where if we said, you know, like log base 10 of 100 equals log base 10 of x, then we could say, oh, the logarithms are equal to each other. So we're almost there, except we have this minus 2 there. So we can't apply the equality of logarithms because we don't have one logarithm equal to another logarithm. We have this minus 2. So what we're going to want to do for this problem is we are going to want to see, you know, it doesn't matter, this 2 we can't get rid of, we can add it, but then we're going to have it down the other side. So what I'm going to want to look to in this problem is to um, put the logarithms on the same side. So let's isolate this negative 2 and let's subtract a log base 10 of c squared minus 1. And I'll do that on both sides. So therefore I get a negative 2 equals log base 10 of c plus 1 minus log base 10 of c squared minus 1. Well now, what I can use is I can use my laws, my rules of, act, uh, my rules of logarithms to say, hey, when I have a, the difference of two logarithms, or the quotient of two, of two logarithms, I'm sorry, the difference of two logarithms, I can rewrite that as the quotient of one single logarithm. So I can rewrite this, as long as they have the same basis, I can rewrite this as one single logarithm as log base 10 of c plus 1 divided by c squared minus 1. Now, why would we want to use that and why is that so important? Well, what I've done is I've created, I've taken two logarithms, now I've condensed them down to one single logarithm. And that's important because now my equation, it only, I only have one single logarithm, which means now what I can do is I can rewrite this as a exponential, right? I can take it from logarithmic form now to exponential form. So a quick little reminder, if I had a logarithm like this, that was right over here. If I had a logarithm, you know, log base 5 of 25, we know that answer is going to equal 2. To rewrite that in exponential form, it equals 5 squared equals 25. So therefore, by taking this problem, which is in logarithmic form, and then rewriting it in exponential form, I keep the same base, so I say 10, to the negative second power is now equal to c plus 1 over c squared minus 1. And we need to remember the rules of exponent state. When I have a negative exponent, 10 to the negative second power is equal to 1 over 10 squared. Right? When you have a negative exponent, you now put that in the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite that to kind of save a little bit of space here. So now I have 1 over 10 squared which is, you know, 1 over 100, all right? So now I have a fraction equal to another fraction, which is a proportion. And proportions, we can apply cross-multiplication. So therefore, by applying cross-multiplication, I have c squared minus 1 equals 100c plus 100. And now I look at this, and I notice oh, I have a c squared. That means I have a quadratic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this problem over here, just to kind of give myself a little bit of space. So I have c squared minus 1 equals 100c plus 100. Now, when solving quadratics, we're not isolating one single variable and trying to get them, um, you know, and solve for that one variable. Remember, quadratics, we want to set them equal to 0 to put them in our standard form. Once they're in our standard form, we could either apply the quadratic formula. We can try to see if we can factor it, or we can complete the square. So in this case, the first thing I need to do is I need to get all my values to one side so it's set equal to 0. So in doing that, I'll subtract 100, and I'll subtract, oh, I'm sorry, subtract 100c, and then I'll subtract 100 as well. So I have c squared minus 101c minus 100 equals 0. Now when looking into factoring this, I say, what two numbers multiply to give me, now that's wrong, that's a negative 1. So, uh, it's 100c minus 101. Yes, because that's a 1, not 1c. So now, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 101, but add to give me negative 100? Well, I could say c minus 100. Sorry, c minus 101 times c plus 1 equals 0. Right? Because negative 101 times 1 is negative 1 of 1. Negative 101 times 1, negative 101 plus 1 is negative 100. Therefore, by now, I'm applying the zero product property, I can say zero, c equals 101, or c equals negative 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the value of c 
We'll do it a couple different steps by using the quotient property of logarithms. Thanks.